What's up guys and welcome back to Melican Fishing. You know I got a ton of great feedback from the giveaway video. Again, thank you so much for everyone that took the time to participate in that. Got way more feedback and comments than I ever could have imagined. There were so many great ideas I'll be using this year in 2017 and beyond. But you know, one resounding theme I kept hearing over and over was questions about how to fish a jig and what are your favorite types of jigs. Uh, and I feel like jig fishing is definitely my strong suit. You know, I love to crank, I love to pull moving baits, uh, top waters, stuff like that. I feel like I'm, I'm well versed in those. But I feel like at the end of the day to get a big, big quality bite or five quality bites to win a tournament, there's no better way to catch a quality bass uh, when you're around other fish than to throw a jig. So what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to tell you five jigs that I feel like are the best five jigs in my box for the entire season. And I know that's pretty simple and I do like to keep things pretty simple, but at the same time I'm extremely particular about exactly how these jigs look and the different ways that I like to fish them and around what cover I like to throw them. So I'm going to tell you guys exactly how I like to fish them and I can promise you, you know I don't want to... No, I'll promise you this. If you throw them how I do and you use the exact baits I'm going to show you, you will catch more fish. All right, number one, we're going to go with Mr. Versatility first, and that is the 3 8 ounce round head finesse jig. I like to use this in two different applications. The first is going to be a super natural color cut down to a finesse presentation, 3 8 ounce ball head and a watermelon or green pumpkin color. And this one I'm going to be using around any type of really clear water situation, usually around rock, uh, cold water, especially whenever there's smallmouth or spotted bass present, although it is a killer for largemouth and cleaner water as well. And what I like to do is I tip that with a little tiny trailer. This is the Net Bait Packet Slim, uh, the three and a half inch model. Perfect, perfect for this jig. It's got a ton of action to it, but it's a real small profile, yet it is still a jig profile, so you'll catch the bigger fish, it seems like, in the area. Any type of rock cover in clean water, this guy is gonna get the nod for me to start off. So the second way I like to fish this 3 8 ounce finesse cut jig is flipping and the specific time I like to use it is when it's super heavy pressure situations or if you've worked through an area already in a tournament or just fun fishing I always like to come back with this 3 8 ounce round head finesse cut jig uh, and I always put a, a trailer on it that's short and compact and has little to no action this is a zoom super chunk junior I think uh, baby pack across something like that or even a little beaver awesome awesome bait for fishing behind people when the bite is super tough and you're flipping something shallow I like to throw this on as light a line flipping as I can get away with now usually I don't like to throw less than 15 pound test fluorocarbon on this uh, because I am flipping it around wood and I'll go back and tell you this as well I like to throw this bait I'll throw it on as light as 10 pound test line if I'm just fishing around rock uh, there's no zebra mussels present uh, so light line on this guy and then you're going to be flipping this. If you can't get away with anything less than 20 pound test fluoro, that's fine too. This will just flat out get more bites when you're following guys throwing that full um, bigger jig, bigger profile. This little compact jig will get a ton of bites flipping. Alright, number two. You guys have seen me throw this guy a ton. It's a three quarter ounce football head jig. And I will throw this all season long from when the ice goes out to when the ice comes back on. It's a deadly, deadly bait. And I feel like I can get away with this three quarter ounce head anytime I'm fishing deeper than five or six feet of water. You know, unless you're fishing a super, super nasty uh, rock pile and like less than 10 feet of water, then I will bump it down to a half ounce or even a three eighth ounce size if I'm fishing riprap or something. But this is just a killer all year long. And I will vary the trailer a little bit based on water temperature. You know, you guys have seen me do this this last fall. When the water is super, super cold, I will cut this trailer way, way down. And so it's just a little tiny compact profile. But all throughout the season, my favorite trailer to throw is this baby pack across on here. This nice long profile will get bit all season long. Now this is like a green pumpkin orange type color. And I'll throw this the majority of the time around rock piles, points, uh, it even works well in a little bit of uh, more sparse brush out deep. You know, I let watercolor dictate what color I use with this, so I will go to a black and blue when the water gets really muddy. But something else to keep in mind, when you've worked an area over uh, in super dirty water with that black and blue color, you can come back through with a green pumpkin. I like a little bit of a highlight color, like an orange or a blue in there. You can come right back in behind there. And there is some days where they won't touch the black and blue and they will eat this killer, killer bait 
or on rock in any type of deep structure all season long. All right, number three, we're gonna switch things up a little bit and we're gonna have a bait constantly moving and that is the 3 8 ounce swim jig. And I like to do some things that are pretty specific to this little bait. Uh, this is a six cents lures divine swim jig. I feel like it's the best swim jig on the market and they have the most different colors, even though I do like to keep it simple. You know, I told you on my, my net bait unboxing video that if you can't get bit on a green pumpkin swim jig with this trailer, you might want to take up bowling or a different hobby. And that is the truth. But what I do to this jig that's so specific is I will trim this all the way down. So I, you can see I've cut it just behind the hook right there. And so that gives us a nice compact profile and it also gives that skirt a ton of flare in the water. So if you're, if you're reeling it in at a constant pace and you just give it a little pump of the rod tip, a little bit of a quicker reel turn every fourth or fifth turn, that skirt will pulse and it'll be super, super lively. Swim jigs are a super natural presentation. And because of that, I love to throw them in cleaner water and I love to throw them around grass. I will get bit on these. Any type of cover when the bite's tough, but anytime you get a little bit more clarity, this will shine over a chatter bait or a spinner bait or something like that. So again, I like to trim it right behind the hook. I love this pack chunk trailer. This is the regular size. This is like a green pumpkin blue flake. The, the jig skirt is a gill color. Any type of green pumpkin or gill color is great. And this is one where I'm gonna trim the weed guard down more than any of my other jigs. So I'm gonna take about half the weed guard out to start. So I'm gonna cut it off right at the head and then I'm gonna cut it at an angle. And so you end up with a pretty limp weed guard. And that's perfect for me because when you get bit on a swim jig, almost every bite is gonna just be a tick and they're gonna be swimming sideways with it. And if you set the hook, you're gonna pull it right away from them. So this is just gonna be a pressure hook set. And I love to throw it on about 15 pound fluorocarbon. Um, if I'm fishing super, super heavy grass or something around big fish, I'll bump it up to 17 or 20 pound. But 15 pound fluorocarbon, 7.3 medium heavy rod, and you just reel into them and lean on them in the hook set. Once again, this bait will get you more bites when the water is a little bit cleaner, maybe two to four foot visibility in the summer, round grass. It is an absolute killer. All right, here you go. Number four, it's gonna be this big old dirty mop jig you saw me make a couple of videos ago. Check down in the description. I'll leave a link down there if you wanna know how to make your own mop jig, and really any jig for that matter. But this guy right here is an absolute killer. This is a three quarter ounce football jig and that's what I like to tie it on almost always. I like to pair it with this baby pack of craw because it, like, again in that mob jig video you saw, it stands up really, really well. So I will fish this one a little bit different, but I throw it in a lot of the same areas that I throw that three quarter ounce football head. I like to throw it around any type of rock cover and any type of structure. So what I mean by that is ledges, um, any type of rock piles, rock points, stuff like that. So this is when you've already worked over an area uh, with that regular size football jig. This guy I'll pull substantially slower than that one. Just crawl it along and really let that skirt flare open up and just be an awesome big profile with, with that natural rubber movement. And I catch a ton of fish on this. And I think, and, and honestly, you'll catch big, big fish on this, but I get a lot of smaller bites on it too. And I think it just draws them in from further away. So it's good for two pound keepers just as well as it is for five, six, seven pound uh, kicker fish in tournaments. Awesome bait though, try it out. If you haven't tried a mob jig, it's a great alternative, something that a lot of the fish haven't seen yet. All right, last but not least, number five, we're gonna go with the Six Sense Divine Hybrid Jig. This is the three quarter ounce model. And the way I use this bait is in any type of brush pile or deep cover uh, and more than 10 feet of water. But the versatility of this bait is just freaking awesome. It'll get through all different types of cover because of that triangle head shape. But here's the modifications I like to make to fish deeper brush with it. I almost always trim it down to a real small profile. You know, big bass are eating bluegill almost always out in those deep brush piles, at least in our area of the country. Uh, a lot of our local lakes don't have shad in them, so they're down there eating these, these little bluegill down there. And this is just a perfect imitator. I throw like a green pumpkin with some blue flash in it almost always, and I'll trim that skirt all the way up. And so that'll do a couple things. One, it'll give it that nice little compact profile, uh, which, is, which is just a great imitator. And two, it's gonna have less drag in the water. So it's gonna get down a lot easier. It's not gonna be a super slow fall because I want it to be down in that brush pile in the strike zone for the maximum amount of time possible. Uh, so another thing I do is I will trim the wheel guard at a 45 degree angle and that'll actually make it stouter. The more you cut off of it, the more stout it'll be. 
and that's 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 very important because you're, you're going to be fishing some super heavy brush piles down there you don't want to take too many fibers out of this weed guard and what i like to pair that with is that little three and a half inch pack of slim and again gives it a nice compact profile gives it a lot of action so those those tails are going like crazy but it doesn't have all that drag of the big regular size pack of craw or even the baby pack of craw or rage craw or anything like that and again that makes it get down in the strike zone this guy is a killer all summer long for me even in the spring when those fish are in the 10 15 20 30 foot deep brush piles give it a try you'll catch more fish out deep this year all right so now that i've shared all my secrets i'm probably just going to get out of fishing since you guys are going to be catching all the fish on my deep spots and any type of flipping spots on jigs this year i might as well just give it up i've shared everything i know but seriously try those baits this year you will catch more fish so what we got coming up i'm going to try to make a couple more videos this week i'm going to go fishing both days this weekend tomorrow night check it out benjamin nowak's channel tomorrow night on wednesday night 7 p.m eastern time so 6 p.m central time we're gonna be doing a live stream ben's channel is super cool i think if you like my channel you'll like his uh, really good dude we're gonna be talking some fishing on there and answering a lot of questions live so if you want a chance you know i try to i try to respond to every single comment i couldn't quite respond to all 500 comments on the giveaway video i tried you have a chance to to have any type of questions answered live on air I will try to answer all of them on there. I'll be on there for about an hour, 6 p.m. Central Time. Check it out tomorrow night, Benjamin Nolak's channel. As always, thanks a ton for watching. Hit that subscribe button right down there to see more of these videos. You know, it's getting closer and closer to open water season. I am fishing open water both days this weekend. Leave a comment below for any videos you want to see moving forward. And I hope what I shared with these jigs can help you catch more fish this year. Thanks a ton for watching.